Hello everyone, this is Daniel from the Knowledge Center Dynamic Media Lab and what I'm going to be going over right now is a brief tutorial on how to capture from a mini DV tape to a DVD. Now the process I'm going to be going over will be fairly in depth. If you want to do a quick way of importing the mini DV to a DVD, you can go ahead and just open up iDVD and do a one-step DVD from the camera. But this method only works if you want to capture every piece of footage that's on the tape. It won't allow you to choose where to begin or stop. So if you need to just grab the whole tape, that's a good way of doing it. But if not, then we're gonna need to go through a few more steps using iMovie. And that's what we're gonna be detailing out right now. So, first thing you're going to need is either a camera or a mini DV player from the multimedia desk. You can check it out with your Wolf card. Once you have power to your device, you are also going to need to find a way to connect it to the computer. Firewire is going to be your best bet on most any machine when you're capturing from a, from a mini DV tape. On either the camera or the mini DV player, both units have a firewire that should be provided. So using the firewire, you're going to need to plug it into your unit, whether it's the camcorder or the mini DV player. You can plug the other end into the front of the computer, and that's what they call the six pin, the fatter end of the firewire connection. And once you have all your cables, you can then turn on your device and uh, locate the portion of the tape that you want to begin recording from. You can just do that by hitting play and then fast forward rewinding to the point where you want to begin. It's best to start maybe a few seconds before you actually need just to make sure you do grab everything. Now that the tape is queued, let's open up iMovie and begin capturing our footage. If you don't know where an application is on a Mac, one of the easiest ways to find it is to go to the spotlight. So let's just go to the top right hand corner and type in iMovie and then hit return. From there, it should launch the program, and then we could begin capturing our footage. Now, if iMovie recognizes the device that you have plugged in to your computer, it will automatically have a capture window waiting for you. But if not, you may need to click on the camera icon off to the side and launch the capture window yourself. If you're still unable to get the capture window to pop up, check your FireWire connection and make sure your device is turned on. Otherwise, this window will not show. It'll say, no device connected. Now, because we've already queued our tape to the location that we want to begin recording, we don't want iMovie to begin recording for us. So we're gonna switch from automatic to manual. And then we can click the import button. A screen will prompt us asking where we want to save the files. So let's go ahead and change the first location to local storage. And give our capture session a name. Uncheck split days into events and click import. The camera will begin capturing from the point we have our tape queued to and will continue until we stop or the tape stops. There is no fast forward when you are recording so however long your footage is that's how long that you're gonna have to sit around and wait for the capturing to go to your computer. So I'm going to go ahead and hit stop, and each time we start and stop a capture process, iMovie will make a new file on the Mac. The fastest way to burn one of these clips to DVD is to know where iMovie stored the original video file that you have just brought in, and simply point another application on the Macs called iDVD to that file. So once we've captured our clips, the next step is to locate where our files were captured. Because we chose local storage as a location for capturing our clips, let's go to local storage, and then we'll find a folder called iMovie events. There should be a .dv file within this folder. If you have more than one .dv file inside of the folder, go ahead and just double click on the clip and make sure that in fact it is the one that you're going to want to burn to a DVD. When you know for sure that's your clip, let's go ahead and rename it just so that it's easier to find later on. Now that we know which file we need to burn to iDVD, let's go ahead and launch iDVD. So let's go to the same way that we found iMovie, let's go to the spotlight, type in iDVD, and hit return. Once iDVD launches, we simply need to go to the file menu and select one step DVD from movie. Now navigate to the movie that we just found earlier. So in our case, we're going to be going to local storage, iMovie events, 
name of the event, and select the correct file. If you haven't already put a DVD into the computer, iDVD will prompt you to do so, and when the disk is ready, when you have it loaded and pushed in and everything's fine, it will begin to encode the video and then burn the files to the DVD. And actually it's authoring the files, it's not just burning the files. So this is what you're going to be needing if you want to play it inside of a DVD player. The first burn of the disc can take a good amount of time depending on how long your clip is. I just have a short clip here, but if you have anything much more than 10-15 minutes, you're going to have to probably sit around for a little while and wait for the video to encode, and then it will write the files to the disc. When the DVD is done burning, iDVD will let you know, and you can simply take the disc out, and I would put it into another machine or a DVD player just to test out to make sure that it does work. It, these DVDs are set to play automatically, so just give it a few seconds and it should launch by itself. So that's about it. If you have any issues burning the mini DV to the DVD disc, be sure to let me know and I'll probably be able to help you out. Or if I'm not around, you can get a hold of the At One Help Desk and see if anybody is on staff who would be able to get you past whatever issue you might be running into. So this concludes the tutorial for capturing a mini DV tape and burning it to a DVD disc. Thanks for watching.